Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. We haven't done a cake tutorial in a little while so I'm going to show you how to make this I want to say Highland cow cake, but I don't really know. It kind of looks like a yak to me at times. To be honest, when I typed in both into Instagram and Google, it kind of showed me similar things. Now you might be wondering, how did I actually make this cake if I don't even know what animal I'm making? But the thing is, is all I was asked to do was make a Western themed cake. So I think I hit the mark on this one. Western usually isn't my favorite theme, but I was excited to try out this trend. I feel like it's the new unicorn. Yeah, Highland Cow slash Yak Cake takes over unicorn craze, I want to say. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make it. I'm going to show you how to make it very simplistically. And then I'm also going to show you how to up it a little bit, just with a little bit of shading and edible painting. But you could honestly skip that part and you're still going to get that really great trendy look that everyone is making. I'm starting off with a really, really delicious black cocoa chocolate cake. I will link the recipe down in the description box below. It is not my recipe, it's one that I tried out. What I like about it is that it's pretty stable, but in future, if I were to use this, I would definitely bake them in more pans and just make thinner layers because cutting this really doesn't work. You can't really slice the layers in half that easily. The crumb is slightly loose, so that's why. If you have a really tight crumb, you can cut the slices super easily. So it's firm, but it doesn't cut super well. I would definitely do shallow pans, more pans, and then go ahead and stack them together because they do bake up relatively flat. Chocolate cake, no matter what recipe I use, and even when I use butter in place of oil, it's just not as strong as vanilla cake can be. So I covered my cake in an Italian meringue buttercream crumb coat, and I left it in the fridge overnight. This just makes sure that when I'm working with things, nothing is going to slip around. Everything is going to be very, very solidified. I am using satin ice fondant today. It's my favorite fondant. I will say though that it does work differently where I live. One time I used this when I was in Toronto, and it was incredibly dry in comparison. So I'm in British Columbia in Canada. It works very, very well. And I just have to add a little bit of shortening to it in order to get this to a really great consistency. I knead it in and then I put down a little bit of cornstarch and I make sure to roll everything out really, really thin. Now you can see here, this is really not a very perfect way of me covering this in fondant. But the reason that I'm not caring too much is one, I was running low on fondant, so I just needed to go with what I I had and two I'm going to be covering this up anyway there's no need for me to waste time trying to get this perfect perfect if this were for a wedding cake that was supposed to be a pure white wedding cake of course I would have been a lot more diligent with the way that I covered this yeah we're all just gonna look at that super ugly crack on the side and be okay with it so what I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to stack my cake I used to always skip this step I used to just put the cake board right on top of the fondant, but when you're running low on fondant, really, really important to make sure that you can save as much as possible. I have so many of these paper straws. I don't know about you guys, I, I love a turtle, and, and I certainly don't want to make plastic be filled in our oceans, but it really, really is tricky for me to drink out of these, so I always opt to just use my metal straw instead when I can, and that means I end up with a lot of takeout straws that are left over. So that is why I have these, and I'm gonna use them as supports. And I have to say it works out really, really well. Get that dowel in the center there, and I am just manhandling this cake. I actually tried to put it on once already, but it was in the wrong spot. And again, I realize how, how ugly looking that is. Like, what is that giant Fisher looking thing on the side. By the way, if if you did end up making a mistake like that, you can continue to use that fondant smoother and it will eventually come out. I'm just not wasting the time. And I'm even dealing with the fact that there's that giant kind of chocolate splotch on the top of the upper cake. I think I end up actually just using the steam to wipe that off and then I cover up all of the imperfections with this rope. And I knew that I was going to use this brown fondant rope. Fun fact, all of this brown fondant was actually made up of all my leftover fondants that I had dyed various colors and I had no use for those colors anymore. So I just took some brown fondust, by the way, highly recommend fondust if you're trying to color your fondant. And it was able to bring me to this chocolate brown color despite all of the other colors being used in this fondant before. So I give my cake a good steam with a clothing steamer. It just gets it a little bit tacky. You don't wanna steam it too much because then 
and it just ends up really, really gooey and nothing actually sticks to it. So just a little bit of steam on there and then go ahead and place your fondant details on there. Always make sure that you have shortening by your side. Again, I cannot stress this enough. If you find that the fondant details are cracking on you, add in that shortening. It is going to buy you time, and it's also going to buy you flexibility with your fondant, which is going to be able to allow you to do things like kind of make this fabric look. I really need to cover up this large patch of Let's just be real, guys. Ugliness and imperfection, and it's all good. That's what I love about cake decorating. You never really fully mess up. There's always a way to fix it. So I made this pretty thin because if I don't, it ends up looking like it's not really fabric and it's just gonna look like a giant piece of mush that I put on the side. That being said, you don't wanna go too, too thin because then it's gonna start ripping and breaking on you. I first started working with fondant, I had this idea that it was very delicate and could not be moved once you placed it on somewhere. Once I realized that you can actually move it around multiple times before it starts cracking on you, thank you to shortening, it made my life a whole lot easier. And as you can see, I'm really manipulating that piece of red fondant to make it look like fabric and add those little details in there. There's something in my brain that when I'm cake decorating, I need to cover up every imperfection that I see first, and then I can move along to the details. So I was fairly happy that every little crack and crevice that I had had before was pretty much covered up for the most part. So I moved on to the nose portion and the mouth portion of this animal. And yeah, I'm gonna keep saying this animal because I don't really know what to call it. I know it's somewhere in the cow sphere though. I used to always think that you were supposed to steam only at the very end of your cake, but always steam every single time in between just helps everything stick way more easily. Later on in the video, I am going to talk about pricing and right here is one of the big reasons why this cake, although very simple looking at the top, costs so much money because it takes so much time to do this part. And there are extruders that can help you, but I find that you just can't get the right tapered off shape that you need for this. So you do need to sit there hand rolling everything. Now what makes this a little bit more special looking is if you add in different color choices. I'm going with a lot of brown right now, but I do end up adding in highlights later on. I've seen some versions of the cakes where they add in little ears or they even just leave it at that. I decided to add in some horns. I'm using satin ice gum paste for the horn, but it wasn't really necessary for me to use gum paste. I could have easily used fondant as well. I just only had white gum paste left, so that's why I'm using it. That being said, gum paste does dry a little bit more quickly and it's also a little bit stiffer. So when you are doing something that's 3D and has to stand up on its own, I would go with gum paste when possible but totally easily doable with just fondant. I put a stick in that horn and then I stabbed it into the cake. I used a lollipop stick, but again, this is just about me being resourceful. I had lollipop sticks. You could easily use toothpicks in this instance. It's not really a big horn. It doesn't stick up that much. In actuality, it could probably even stick up on its own, but this is going for a drive, so I wanted to make sure that I was making this as stable as possible. You could leave the cake right there, but I want to add in some shadowing, so I'm just taking some edible paints. And this is the thing, you might not have edible paints, but maybe you have airbrush colors or maybe you have gel food colorant. You could mix that up with a little bit of vodka and just go ahead and get painting. The thing here is that you've got to use your artistry and I'm not really an art teacher in this regard. I just do what feels right. But the way that I always approach this is I always make sure that I have some sort of white gel food colorant or white edible paint. That way things don't get too dark. So I always end up taking a dark color, mix it in with that white, be really, really light with the way that I paint. And I choose one side and then kind of drag that color out. And then I don't really go back in and dip with a lot of edible paint. I might go in with a dry brush to kind of bring that color out further. It really is about being very light with whatever it is that you're doing and then you can always build up. It's very difficult to remove color so it's way better for you to go in with less and then just keep building and building. And all edible paints, gel food colorants, everything always works a little bit differently so you want to make sure that you kind of warm up with your colors a little bit first and then start to build up a little bit more. Here's where I add in some of those details. I'm adding on some black dots and then I did a little bit of a pattern. At this point, the cake was looking pretty put together to me, but something was missing. It was just missing that bam element. So I decided to add on some gold and I didn't want to do the thing where I had to 
perfectly color every single piece of rope with this gold luster dust mixed with vodka. So instead, I kind of went for a more rustic vibe and just haphazardly placed that gold on there. Then I decided the bottom tier still looked a little too perfect. I wanted to make it look dirty, but I also wanted it to have some elegance still, so I decided to go with a gold paint splatter. It was still looking a little bit empty to me. This was my original vision, by the way. No cowboy hat here, but I decided to add on the cowboy hat just because that 10 inch on the bottom just looked really, really bare. I did this purely with fondant, all of that brown fondant that I had saved up from the hair, and I just molded it into the shape of a cowboy hat. The bottom of the cowboy hat was really just cut out with a cookie cutter, and then I kind of molded it into the shape that I wanted. Cowboy hats are supposed to look distressed, not perfect, which makes this a lot easier. I decided to wrap around this piece of rope, which was just white gum paste that I had left over, needed to steam it a little bit because it was coming apart, and then it made it way easier for me to make sure that this was all pressed in. Using the same colorant I used for the face, I'm just placing it a little bit on the edges of the hat to give it that distressed and more realistic look. Active time that I spent on this cake, including all of the baking and prepping, was approximately four to five hours. So let's just get right into it. How much would I charge for this cake? So in today's current climate, I would be charging $675 Canadian for this cake, but really I didn't charge anything at all. I gave it to my friend and in exchange, she planned a really fun date night for me, complete with babysitting. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye.